Hello everyone, Chief Meteorologist Matt Holler. I wanted to put together a video to go along with this article, just showing you some of the images and maps that I came across while I was doing my research for this story, trying to determine the five worst Arctic outbreaks that we've seen in the Midwest. Now let's start with February of 1899. This probably was the worst Arctic outbreak ever to impact the country. No Arctic outbreak is responsible for more low temperature records than this one. And it's easy to see why, because even in the shades of green on this map, those are temperatures that were below freezing. The only places in the country that stayed above freezing, very far Southern Florida and very far Southern California, right along the coast, everywhere else during this Arctic outbreak, at some point, temperatures fell below freezing and a lot of places a lot colder than that. This event was responsible for the coldest temperature ever in Nebraska, Ohio, Texas, Louisiana, and Florida. And those records still stand to this day, all these years later. Not a lot of pictures were taken back in 1899, but a few were. And some of them have survived, including this one from southern Louisiana. What you're looking at here is people staying on the banks of the Mississippi River, looking at the ice flow out into the Gulf of Mexico. Usually when ice forms in the Mississippi River, it certainly doesn't reach far south as New Orleans and the Gulf. But in this case, it was so cold that the Mississippi River was frozen north of Cairo, Illinois. And south of there, there was ice all along the river, all the way out into the Gulf of Mexico. Truly remarkable. Also, this was associated with a significant snowstorm that dumped tremendous amounts of snow in the Northeast, particularly across New Jersey. 20, 30 inches of snow, but what's probably most remembered from this is the snow that fell in places where it doesn't snow very often. How about southern Louisiana seeing two, three inches of snow? And Florida seeing measurable snow as well. In fact, there were flurries of snow reported as far south as Fort Myers, Florida. It's only snowed farther south in Florida one other time, and that was 1977. A truly rare event. All right, jump ahead to December 1989. This actually tied in Nebraska the lowest temperature ever. So in 1899, Nebraska hit minus 47. Well, 90 years later, they hit minus 47 again with this event. And this is a great map to show what causes our lowest temperatures. An Arctic air mass, an Arctic high pressure area. So this is an area of high pressure that moves in from over the Arctic. That's why we call it an Arctic outbreak. And the reason why you need a high pressure system is because high pressure systems are responsible. If you have one right on top of you, that's going to be very cold air already. But high pressure systems are also going to lead to clear skies and light winds if it's right on top of you. And those are the ideal conditions for getting our temperatures to drop to those lowest levels. What also helps is if you have fresh snow on the ground right ahead before that high pressure center moves in. That's when you're going to get your coldest temperatures. And that's what happened in Nebraska. But this is another outbreak that was responsible for some really cold temperatures in a whole lot of places, uh, including central Illinois. Uh, this is one of the coldest Decembers ever in the U.S. And so appropriately, there were lots of December records that were set. All those numbers in red on this map are the coldest December temperatures ever recorded. And that was a lot of places across central Illinois. And these are some remarkable numbers for central Illinois, seeing temperatures below 20 degrees, not something that happens very often. Also, what's memorable about this event is the amount of snow that once again fell in places that doesn't see it very often, particularly southern Georgia and northern Florida. In fact, this is another event where flurries of snow are reported as far south as Tampa, Florida, with some measurable snow in the northern part of the state. But how about 20 inches of snow in North Carolina? An epic snowstorm, the worst one ever for the southeast coast. And also look at the dates here, December 22nd to the 24th. So, and including in Florida, there was snow that was falling actually on Christmas Eve. So guess what? It was actually a white Christmas in Florida. <laughs> this is the paper in Jacksonville, the Florida Times Union. White Christmas, burr, because with the white Christmas, I'm sure folks were pretty excited about getting some really cold temperatures. So was it worth it? The ultimate question. All right, now let's jump ahead to January 1994. And again, here's a surface map showing an area of high pressure, a strong area of high pressure over Kentucky. Ohio, Indiana. So that's where we saw some truly intense cold temperatures. This event was responsible for the coldest temperature ever in Indiana. In Indiana it hit minus 36 
in this event. But again, it wasn't just Ohio, Kentucky, and Indiana saw cold temperatures. It was actually colder uh, farther to the north, but it was just extremely below normal temperatures for Indiana, Ohio, and Kentucky. And so that's why it's probably the worst cold air outbreak for those three states. But also with this event came a significant snowstorm. Okay, the shades of pink on this map indicate where over 12 inches of snow fell. And look from Western Kentucky all the way up into Maine, you can follow a trail of over 12 inches of snow. Again, a pretty remarkable snowstorm to go along with a pretty remarkable cold air outbreak. And these are the lowest temperatures that were recorded on the morning of January 19th. Again, lots of places in Ohio, across northern Kentucky and Indiana, seeing temperatures below 20 degrees below zero. But actually, the coldest temperatures were often one of the coldest parts of the country. Northern Wisconsin, northern Minnesota was actually in between minus 30, close to minus 40 degrees on the morning of January 19th. Now, in Chicago, there wasn't much snow, but this is a cool story from the Times of Northwest Indiana, uh, because across the Chicago metro area, there was a shortage of batteries with this event, because so many people had dead batteries. If they didn't have a new battery in the car, it was so cold, they couldn't start their vehicles. And so people were running to the stores trying to buy batteries. And so people <laughs> then, after that initial rush, couldn't find batteries and couldn't start their vehicles. And so there were a bunch of folks that couldn't get to work because their vehicles wouldn't start. And there were actually broken water lines with this event. Because there wasn't snow on the ground, the cold and the below freezing temperatures penetrated deep into the soil and actually caused water lines to broke. So some folks were without water, they couldn't drive anywhere. So it was a mess in Chicago, even though there wasn't much snow, it was just so cold, it caused its own set of problems. Moving ahead to February of 1996, another remarkable event uh, what this map shows is where there were below normal temperatures between January 29th and February 6th. This was a prolonged event, too. Uh, it, it was just cold air that just sat there, and it seemed to get colder and colder, like February 2nd, February 3rd, February 4th, 4th were the worst days, but it was cold everywhere between January 29th and February 6th. And notice where temperatures were most below normal across Iowa, Wisconsin, Minnesota, North Dakota, South Dakota. This event is responsible for the coldest temperatures ever in Iowa, Wisconsin, and Minnesota. In Minnesota, it hit minus 60 degrees. Not a wind chill, an actual temperature of minus 60 degrees. Crazy stuff. Uh, but look at all the, the temperatures that were minus 30, minus 40 degrees with this event for lows. But also notice the high temperatures. High temperatures that weren't getting out of the negative teens, not the positive teens, the negative teens. So there were a lot of places that stayed below zero for a long amount of time. And one of the places where it stayed below zero the longest was Rochester, Minnesota. <laughs> Let's count it out. Starting 6 a.m. on January 29th to January 30th, January 31st, February 1st, February 2nd, February 3rd, February 4th, more than six days, almost made it to seven days with temperatures below zero, but never got above zero. And notice how a lot of the time it was in the minus 20s, the minus 30s, the minus teens. Just painful. I bet folks there were spent most of this time <laughs> inside. And there wasn't a lot of snow with this event. It was mainly just cold air, so not a lot of pictures. But there was some significant snow in Michigan. Now, Michigan didn't see the coldest temperatures, but it was very cold. And this picture was taken the day after the coldest temperatures, but I, I just cracked up when I saw this picture because this guy is shoveling snow in a t-shirt and jeans, and it is still freezing outside. But apparently the story goes that apparently he gets too hot when he wears a jacket and he has a lot of snow to shovel, which it does look like he has a lot of snow to shovel. And you know, this, I think this is very representative of the Midwest. We're pretty tough here, but I would say this guy is maybe one of the, uh, the tougher residents to withstand temperatures <laughs> that cold. All right, now January 2019. I bet this is the event that a lot of folks remember. And what we're looking at here is actually the morning of January 30th. And we're looking at the wind chills. So January 31st was actually the colder day overall. We saw lower temperatures in more locations, but we saw the worst wind chills where it felt the coldest the morning of the 30th. And these are some crazy numbers. Look how many places we're seeing wind chills, minus 40, minus 50, minus 60 
Look up in northern Minnesota, minus 65. Oh, just awful. <laughs> just remarkable how many folks were seeing those wind chills in the minus 50s and minus 60s. A whole bunch, even down into central Illinois, seeing wind chills in the minus 50s. Incredible. Now, these are the lowest temperatures that occurred on the morning of January 31st. A lot of places, minus 20s, minus 30s. Notice that this event not didn't see the below zero temperatures reach as far south as some of the others, but it was so intense for the, the Midwest. These temperatures were so below zero and really the coldest a lot of folks had seen since that 1996 event. Now, in some places, it was colder in 1996 and 2019, but for some, 2019, this event was actually colder, especially in eastern Iowa and in northern Illinois. Actually, this event is responsible for the coldest temperature ever in Illinois in Mount Carroll it hit minus 38 degrees. <laughs> I've said it a lot, but another incredible temperature. Here's a picture from Chicago with this event. Look at all the ice in the Chicago River, making it very difficult for barges to get through. And we just typically don't see that much ice in the Chicago River. Uh, it's pretty unusual to see that much ice. And then this is from Kenosha, Wisconsin, on the shores of Lake Michigan. I think this is a good picture to wrap up on because, you know, it's pretty. <laughs> Once the worst of the cold is behind us, uh, you know, you can get some pretty p images from all of this. You know, after the snow is done falling, after the ice is done falling, we do get the opportunity to see some beautiful images and some beautiful pictures. So there's a silver lining to all of this. So thanks for watching, and hopefully we don't see any cold air outbreaks like these anytime soon.